<laughs> hey guys, I'm Boris. I'm a physician assistant. Today, I have a real treat for those of you who follow me for PA school content. I have Elijah and Omer. Elijah just got accepted to PA school and Omer is a PA school applicant hoping to get in very shortly. So just very quickly, guys, can you introduce yourself? Elijah first. Uh, so my name is Elijah Caparoso. Uh, I'm a recently admitted, like Boris said, recently admitted uh, PA applicant to Rutgers PA program. Uh, I actually haven't started yet. I'll be starting in August, so in a couple months. Uh, so a little bit about me. I graduated from UCLA uh, with my bachelor's and then ended up not doing so well. So then I did a master's at ASU, just finished that last last year, last fall, I'd say. Uh, and I guess Boris has me on the podcast just because uh, I'm categorized as like one of those like low GPA applicants that had those miracle stories or I don't know. <laughs> and I guess I'd also be under that same category of non-traditional considering I had uh, my kiddo when I was a sophomore. Uh, I think I was like 19 at the time. <laughs> I was pretty young. What's the kiddo's name? His name's Caleb. He's upstairs right now. I told him not to come down yelling because I was doing this <laughs> interview. So I always thought that was uh -huh. a good name. Nice. All right. Well, congrats. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I have Absolutely. a kiddo, too. <laughs> a, little, a little bit more about me. A little bit more about uh, about Elijah. Omer, how about you? What's up with you? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for having me on. My name is Omer. Um, I'm a HIV counselor for the public health department here at L.A. County. Um, and I've been working in HIV public health for the last seven years. So I think I have a little bit of a non-traditional route um, as well. I graduated um, quite some time ago from UC Irvine with a degree in biological sciences, always dreamt about getting to medicine, getting to healthcare, and I kind of deviated a little bit because I wanted more experience, I wanted more personal development, and I got a lot of shadowing experiences from different career paths that finally allowed me to sort of settle on, okay, being a physician assistant is really a great fit for me. So now I'm just here to learn from you guys, from the experts, on what is the best path to go from this point on. So I think we're going to be talking about uh, post back versus masters um, uh, in this in this video today. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's going to be the title of the video or something similar, like post back versus masters, low GPA PA school applicant kind of a deal. Because that is Elijah. That's what happened. You know, he ended up going the masters route. I went the post back route. You know, mm -hmm. we both got in. I'm a PAC. He's a PAS. So, uh, and we're going to help Omer decide what he's going to do, right? <laughs> One or the Hopefully. other. Hopefully. Um, so basically the format is, it's going to be mostly a conversation. So Omer and I are going to be asking Elijah some questions, hoping to get Omer into PA school. And as a byproduct, some of you watching this video, hopefully give you some good information, helping you get into PA school. And so I've just got a couple of very basic questions I think every pre-PA applicant wants to know. And then I'm going to set Omer loose on Elijah, as long as he's ready. Um, right. so, <laughs> very basic questions from me, uh, just basically stats. Elijah, what was your uh, post back GPA, or sorry, your undergraduate GPA? Okay, so it's a lot of number crunching. Uh, I actually have a list here, because uh, a lot of people always ask me, so I, just, I have it ready. <laughs> Um, so my undergrad GPA, I think coming out of UCLA, uh, just from it being calculated from the university, I'd say it was like around a 2.1 or something. But if I were to calculate my SGPA after graduating from UCLA, I think it was around a 2.1 as well. And my overall was probably like a 2.3. So I was really, I was really down there in the trenches. Uh, so I decided I had to do a master's. I had to really kick butt in that. And I started taking prereqs and retaking prereqs and I had to kick butt in that. Um, and the reason I retook those prereqs was because they were starting to expire. Uh, I was getting a little older uh, in my life and those classes were starting to expire. But after all was said and done at the time, uh, my application was verified. My master's wasn't technically done yet, but then I was able to get my science sheet paid up to a 2.3 and my CGPA somewhere closer to that 3.0 realm. But mm. like, as you can see, like nothing budged. Um, it was a, uh, it was pretty disheartening, especially uh, while I was applying, uh, a little more about me. So my PCE, I had around 5,000 hours when I applied, um, probably 6,000 now. Uh, I, I did drop down a part-time. I'm taking it a little easy on myself before I start. Uh, leadership was during my undergrad. I had around 792 hours in that. Uh, shadowing at the time of application, I had 24. 
extracurriculars. I, I did a lot of extracurriculars in my undergrad, uh, along with raising my kiddo, which is probably why my grades suffered. So I had around 210 hours in that. Um, and after all was said and done, my master's GPA was about, it was a near 4.0. I got like an A minus in one class, which was pretty frustrating. Uh, I had like a 3.97 master's GPA on uh, my last 60 units uh, total was around like a 3.86. Got you. A lot of numbers. Did you have a any lot? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Did you have any volunteer experience? Probably like one hour, which I did after <laughs> I applied. <laughs> okay, one I, I, hour like, volunteer. But yeah, with how busy I was doing the masters and doing like a like a little post back and getting shadowing and working full time and going to school full time uh, and raising a kiddo, it was it was too much. I, I just couldn't fit fit volunteering in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, raising a kiddo is technically volunteer service. It's like community service, <laughs> you know, your home community. Free labor um, for my for my son. <laughs> free labor for uh, for Caleb. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think that's another title for the video potentially in the running. Uh, how to get into PA school with one volunteer hour. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a good hooker, yeah. I think yeah, absolutely. People like um, that one. <laughs> okay, a couple more very basic kind of numerical questions. So um, how many times have you applied to PA school? So I don't think this is a norm. I, I honestly think this was, a, this was like a complete miracle story. So this was my first time applying wow. and I had one interview and that, wow. was, that was it. I, so I'm in no, by no means any expert on the matter. I just want to convey my story to people just to let them know like, hey, this is what I did. This is what worked yeah. for me. And it only takes one school. Uh, but yeah, this was my first cycle, my first and only, thank goodness. So you uh you only applied one time, you only got one interview and you got in and it was Rutgers, which is like a really yes. good prestigious program too. How many uh how many programs did you apply to? Uh I think I applied to like the average. Most people were saying like seven to ten was average, but I, I applied to mm -hmm. around like twelve. Okay. Um and I had to be really strategic with how I applied. I, I couldn't just apply to like schools near me. Yeah. Right? Because I would have to meet the minimum and most minimums are like 3.0 and I was sitting at like a 2.3 science. Yeah. So I had to, um, I had to really do like extensive research on what schools I applied to. I, I really had to see what schools would even take a look at my application. And um, mm -hmm. it, it was really nice because Rutgers had this one supplemental where they mentioned that if you have like below our 3.2 minimum GPA, can you explain any extenuating circumstances? And, yeah. you know, I, I really took my time in those supplementals and I, I really poured my heart out and just really just told my truth. It's like, Hey, this was, this was the student I was before I was raising a kid. I was really young, immature, but this is the potential I have now. And I, I really showed them that they were masters. So that's kind of how you got your foot in the door with the low GPA as you extensively researched programs that didn't have that high minimum. And then you mm -hmm. used the uh, supplemental essays to explain yourself. Yes. Correct. So you didn't actually like make personal contacts with the admissions offices or walk in there and you know demand that they talk to you. You just like, oh man, trust me, I, I sent a lot. I sent a lot of emails. I yep. I made sure like, hey, like these are my numbers. Will you guys even look at me? And there's some programs I ghosted me, and I think I didn't even apply to those at all because I wanted a program that would you know um, mm -hmm. there would be some sort of back and forth conversation. Um, yeah. So the schools that I applied to, there really weren't. A lot and some of them some of the ones that i applied to i probably had an inkling that they would even look at my application but uh there was a couple schools like Rutgers where i, I knew like they they said they look at every application and i mm -hmm. my goodness they they really do because i don't know how i got in with these numbers i was mainly applying to look like a reapplicant for next cycle um but i mean they gave me a little taste of the <laughs> the interview process and i was like i have to get in i can't yeah. do this a second time Oh my God. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Cause I mean, Thank like you. you didn't think you were getting in, you were like, let's just do a practice run. And then he freaking gets in. Oh, trust me. I mean, I, I prep, I made sure to prep before my first cycle, mm -hmm. but even then I knew I, I knew my numbers weren't there. Like it's not what programs are looking for, but um, I, I, I got, I got really lucky. Honestly, I just, everything that fell into place for me, contacting my mentor on those Facebook groups and her mm -hmm. telling me, Hey, just apply. And I mean, that was her school that I applied to. And I, if I didn't do the things that I did and I, like outreach to all those people and like found out more about what to do with a low GPA, then I don't think I'd be where I'm at today. Yeah. So just to recap, you spent a lot of effort. You didn't just like submit your CASPA and just fire it off and hope that that was it. 
You research the schools to apply to, which ones would possibly allow you with a lower GPA. You sent out probably hundreds of emails to admissions counselors and tried to like talk to some of them. And then the ones that actually would give you time of day, those are the ones you focused on. Yes, correct. Okay. And just one thing I'd like to add is admissions staff turn over like crazy, right? It's a tough job. And so it's not like any specific program is going to give you a chance. It's a specific program at a specific time. So like right now, for instance, Rutgers might have that kind of a counselor that's got time on her hands and, you know, wanted to hear Elijah's story. Next year, that person mm -hmm. might be working somewhere else. So Rutgers would no longer be a school that you would want to do that for. So the best you can do is just like email and call and walk into as many as possible and just see which one you might have a connection with that year. And then the following year, it might be a different school, you know? Right. Yeah. You did the exact right thing. Good on you. Thank you. <laughs> Literally exact same story as me, except there was only two schools because I had to stay in Syracuse at the time. Uh, so okay. I just like made best friends with the admissions counselors to both, got interviews at both, you know, got into one. So that's what you got to do. All right. Last question. And I know Omer's sitting there quietly and patiently. <laughs> I'm sorry, Omer. Um, I have one last question for Elijah. Elijah, why physician assistant? Oh, man. Um, it's it's really something I didn't even know about growing up. I, I always knew I wanted to be in medicine. Um, I My family has a very extensive history in medicine. My mom's a nurse. My grandparents were doctors in the Philippines. Um, and it just seemed like medicine was the way to go. And I knew I didn't want to be a nurse. Uh, so I thought I really wanted to be a doctor until I found out about the PA profession and until my life kind of like unraveled and like, oh, I have a kid. Like uh, eight years is a little too long for med school. So yeah, I mean, as soon as I had my son, I was, he's a blessing, yes. But at the time I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm not going to get into med school. How can I support a family and, you know, do this? And then that's when the PA profession kind of came up, like out of nowhere. My grandpa mentioned it and I looked into it. Um, and then when I really started working after my, uh, my bachelor's after UCLA, um, I started describing for some PAs. Uh, I started working around a lot of PAs and they said they love their job. And they started telling me more about it and how it's a lot less schooling and you get paid like a really good salary. It's a really stable living. A lot of PAs love their profession. A lot of doctors tell me like to do the PA route because it, it just fits so well with my lifestyle and just how my life came to be. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think there was one specific moment I never mentioned this in a personal statement or anything like that, but it was one, one specific moment in the ED when I, because uh, I'm an ED tech right now, uh, I work alongside with like the trauma service sometimes and I saw what the PAs do, uh, what they're capable of on the trauma service. And there was one day when there were like multiple high acuity traumas that came in and an attending had to stabilize one and his PAs had to stabilize the other and kind of, they were able to orchestrate their own patient while the attending was trying to stabilize his and I just thought the scope of practice of what PAs can do, at least in the emergent setting, it's it's, it's amazing. Mm. So, in not so many words, you wanted to be a doctor without having to do all the schooling, which yes. is literally almost every PA, yes. almost yep. every single PA. But how do you yep. say that in a personal statement without basically saying that? But we all know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's the trick. But anyway, great answer. Very great answer. I could see why you got in, man. And, and you communicate very clearly. You got this like very friendly, very approachable demeanor about you. I, I definitely see why they, you know, wanted you in the program. Thank you. Uh, and best of luck to you. And Omer, I think that leads us into your questions. Okay. Thank you, Boris. So Elijah, just a few questions for you. Um, first and foremost, what made you decide between a master's program um, as opposed to getting to a post back program? What what was your decision making? <laughs> so I, I guess the fun answer would be because my boss told me to, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she's kind of in the same path too. She's uh, doing medicine. Uh, well, she's applying to med school and she she is doing the master's route as well. And she kind of told me like, hey, like instead of a post -bac, why not do a, a master's? And I was really like Boris, really considering a post because I don't know, something about a master's sounds like it's really expensive, but uh I think it all kind of adds up in the end. Um, at the end of the day, I chose it because I wanted, uh, I guess, a master's to my name. Uh, it would be awesome having two. Uh, that's a sort of little bit of an ego thing there. Mm -hmm. um, but really, it, it was just to raise my GPA. It's, it was just to show at comms that, hey, like my undergrad wasn't so good, but here I am kicking butt. 
in my graduate program, I was able to get a near 4.0. Um, so that, that was the main reason I chose a master's versus a post -bac. It was mainly because the wife told me to, but also because I wanted that master's to my name. But there there is no wrong or right route. If a post -bac works for you, I say do that because it worked for Boris. And for me, the master's worked for me and I, I got in. So we kind of both have two sides of the coin here and um, we both got in. So I think any route that you take would, would be the right one. As long as you kick butt, that's it. Uh, what kind of, I think we got through question two pretty well here, but for question three, what kind of master's was it? I don't know if you mentioned it. No, I didn't. Um, so it, w it was a science-based master's. I know some people do like public health and I I'm not too sure the nuances around that, but I've heard people get in with like public health, but I specifically chose uh, medical nutrition and it was very research heavy. Um, and I think there was a, a part on the CASPA where I was able, act, actually able to publish or at least upload my research. So I don't even know if that was even looked at, but yeah, that was the master's I got into. Medical nutrition. I really like that. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's the kind of the future. So I can't remember. I, I took this class, basically like history of medicine kind of a deal. It was in my post bag. Mm -hmm. And it said something along the lines of like, what used to kill people was like accidents and like workplace accidents and, you know, fights and whatnot. And then that kind of stopped. And then it was infections like bacteria and then antibiotics came about and that basically stopped, you know, not completely, but mostly. And now it's all metabolic diseases, you know, feeding ourselves mm -hmm. incorrectly, not exercising. Um, so I feel like nutrition is kind of the future. So you're definitely in a good place for that. I, I quite enjoyed the masters too. Like I, I initially went in saying I'm going to do this master's for the GPA, but then like, if you think about it and like nutrition is a big part of our lives. And I, I realized like growing up, not many of the uh, physicians that I saw in my family visits would mention anything about nutrition. So I, I was hoping to supplement that somehow into how I practice as a PA and like everything just fell into place. And like, I, I really enjoyed that master's. I think it, it could play a big role in how I practice as a provider. So I think that was a big benefit of doing nutrition. I know other people do like physiology masters, um, or like, like I said earlier, public health, but I think choosing like a science-based uh, masters, or if you're doing a post back, just doing those graduate level science courses should, the one of those two would be the right route for people who are in our, in the same boat as us. Sorry, Omar, do you have a follow on? I don't want to step on you. Yeah, I had a follow up, Elijah. Um, great to hear all that. How did you did you by chance consult with an admissions counselor when you were telling them, hey, I'm thinking about doing this uh, master's program. Do you think it's going to help boost my chances of getting to PA school versus a post -bac? Did you get any positive feedback that sort of directed you um, towards the master's that reinforced that decision? Um, I did. I did get that positive reinforcement once I started delving into those Facebook groups and making posts and seeing what other people were posting and saying like, yeah, do a master's or a post -bac. But I had like one really kind of negative experience with a school uh, around my area. I did get in touch with one of their outcomes, like counselors, I think is what it was, but this was years ago. So I don't know if that person's still there. Uh, they kind of told me like, Hey, like, we're not going to even look at you. If, like you don't do like a post back. So like mm. they basically told me like not to email him back until I finished the post back. And I don't think that's the norm with how uh, counselors usually respond to you. Uh, but I did have both negative and positive uh, reinforcements uh, with regards to having a low GPA because there's some counselors out there who think that medicine's not for you if like you have this horrible GPA. But then there's some people who think who really want to push you, and uh, that's kind of why I wanted to get on this podcast with Boris and you, Omer, because I wanted to show people like, no, like you can do it, like you can have, you can have a really bad GPA like mine, and you can do steps to right the wrongs of your academic past and you can really fix your GPA and get in and that it's possible. Yeah. I think if a counselor thinks that medicine is not for you just because you made mistakes in the past, mm -hmm. I think that counselor is in the wrong job. <laughs> yeah. I, I I was really young at the time. So I kind of, it kind of hurt me to the core there when he told me that. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess it being, Sorry, um, I could see them being very realistic because PA mm -hmm. school is like 2% admission. Yes. You know, like it's harder to get into PA school than it is Harvard. So it's like, it's extremely competitive. I could see them being uh, like realistic about it and saying like, look, it's by the numbers, there's kind of no point in trying, but um, success story, 
success story, future success story. You know what I mean? <laughs> so like, if you want it bad enough, you're just going to be that much better, you know, than mm -hmm. someone who had it easy. You know what I mean? So no. And I think most of the people watching this and following my channel for this reason, it's like, that's what they want. You know, they really want it that badly and they're going to do anything it takes. I agree. Yeah. Oh God. I had another question here and I forgot already. Do you have another one there, Omer? Yeah, I think um, just to follow up on that, I think part of the reason why I get the feeling, because um, I did talk to a few admission counselors before here on some schools in California, and I did get the impression that they didn't say it verbally, but certainly it definitely was implicit that they were a school with a reputation. They wanted to protect their reputation. So having that GPA, they can sort of add it into their website and show everyone this is who the average GPA is and it'll be like 3.66 or 3.57. Mm -hmm. So I think they were looking at it kind of like with, as, as if it was like a business de decision in that sense. And so I didn't get a lot of encouragement. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, it was, it was sort of split talking to certain admissions counselors. Some just said, um, and full disclosure, maybe I'll reveal a little bit about myself. I currently work at, um, a school of medicine here in South LA. I don't know if you're familiar with Charles R. Drew University School of Medicine. Yeah, Science. I applied there. Yeah, <laughs> Amazing school. So I thought working here, working with someone with an amazing reputation, having six years of experience working in this particular field that I work in. Um, one person did tell me, go for it. Go for it. You, if you're getting a letter from this person, if you have this reputation, if you have all these amazing extracurricular activities and you've taken classes in the last few years to show that you're improving, like I took about five or six classes in anatomy, physio, mm -hmm. biostats, and I got straight A's in all of them. Um, it didn't move my GPA a little bit in the direction that I wanted it to, but it's still, I thought I'm at least showing effort in so many different areas and, and, and being a well-rounded candidate. I thought, why not go for it? And yeah. So it's, I think that's probably what a lot of people are very curious about. What's going to have more of an impact? Everything else in my application, or is it really, really on the GPA, even if you do show that you're making improvements and that you have still good study habits at this point in time? So one very important thing about that is how many classes you're taking at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you spent the last three years taking one or two classes at a time in their straight A's, that doesn't show um, an admissions person nearly as much about you as if you took four of those at the same time and got straight A's. Absolutely. See what I'm saying? So is there ever a point even for like one semester when you were taking a full load and got a 4.0? I took maybe three classes at one time, but that was it. It was not consistent. It was not back-to-back -back semesters or back-to-back -back quarters. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that was the issue was it was it was the pandemic and it was also work work life balance striking that balance was just very very difficult working in in healthcare already, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm here with you guys to really decide what else I can do because I'm very determined and you know I I love the journey and I'm willing to do almost whatever it takes mm -hmm. so that's essentially where I'm at right now. Yeah, I respect that. And um, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to communicate what the admissions counselor at my uh, current school that I went to, what she told me. And she said, basically, what we need to see is if you can handle a full load of higher level bio and chem courses, you know, similar, basically simulating a PA school experience, right? So if you can handle that with a 4.0, you'll probably be able to get their PA school because the last thing they want to do is admit you and then you fail out. You know, you just took a spot from somebody that could have made it through. You just, you know made their reputation worse. You got their average GPA and what is it? Attrition rate or whatever. You made that worse. So like, that's the last thing that they want. Plus the detriment to you and all the money that you're out and your time and everything. So they just want to like, basically they're placing a bet on you. How likely is this person to get through the program and then to pass the pants, right? So the best way that they can predict that is through your history. Is there ever a point when you did have a very high GPA taking a full load, which is basically masters or post -bac. That's what you're doing in both of those. Um, so that's kind of the decision. And like we both, you know, two success stories from both sides of those, we both prove that we can get very good grades consistently taking a full load.
Yeah, with um with regards to that like that work life balance, um the past year to two years for me was particularly tough because I wasn't just working full time. I was also doing the masters in an accelerated pace. So instead of two years, I kind of fast tracked it to one year. So I think they kind of took that into consideration. And on top of that, a lot of my prereqs were expiring, like Gen Chem Chem. So I was taking those prereqs on top of the masters. So I was taking gosh, I don't even know how many units, but I I kid you not, I was probably getting three, four hours of sleep every night, uh, barely had to see my wife and my son. So that's kind of like the sacrifice that at least I had to make. Uh, I don't know uh, with your balance in your, how your balance in your life is, but that's the sacrifice I had to make. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's why I kind of like dropped down a part time now because I'm trying to spend time with my son and my wife because these past one to two years, I really have been kicking my butt. And, uh, and just to, follow up on yeah like what Boris said with when he talked to adcoms I think that's probably why they looked at my application is because they saw that I overloaded myself not just with work school the fact that I had a kid but I was also like shadowing at the same time mm -hmm. I was doing like all these things like you have to make yourself holistic in every single aspect it's not just it's not just grades you have to you have to work and be successful and show that balance and like even if you can get shadowing in there and it's it's really tough I remember one month I probably had like one or two days off because I was working weekends as well. Um, but it, it is a sacrifice. But if, if you can keep pushing, man, just you, you just have to take every day, like one day at a time. It's really hard, but it, it's it's really possible. You just you have to kick your butt for it. Yeah, they want to see what are you capable of. Mm -hmm. And obviously, with all of that, Elijah is very capable. So they're like, he can do this on top of that, plus get these grades. Like, he's obviously going to be able to handle our program, or at least we think. I, I survived. I, let's say I yeah. survived. I, I don't know if I thrived, but I survived. <laughs> you thrived. You got like a 4.0, man. What are you talking about? Uh, three hours of sleep does, uh, is, is very taxing. <laughs> the thing <laughs> is, uh, if you're trying to do something like this, and especially if you're playing catch up, like, think about what you're trying to do. You're not applying for a job at Taco Bell. You're not trying to, like, fold laundry or, like, serve chicken sandwiches. Important jobs, both of them. But you're not trying to do that. You're trying to get into something with an extremely competitive field, you know, to get into the school. So work-life balance shouldn't really be in your vernacular, at least for a couple of years. I'll tell you a quick story. In my post back, I think there was like 15 of us. And like when it started, they had us do this weird retreat out in the woods where we like carried each other and climbed ropes and like <laughs> it. it was this whole weird like team bonding thing. And we had this like little campfire like conversation was like, what are your goals for this year? What do you hope to get out of this? And like most of us were like, look, I screwed up in the past. I'm going to study my butt off. I'm going to, you know, work 90, 100 hours a week. I'm going to get a 4.0. I'm going to get into med school, PA school, whatever. And one girl was like, I just really want to find myself. And we were all like, what? <laughs> like, that's what you came to Cornell for and you're paying 80 grand this year to get your grades up to find yourself? Like what? <laughs> um, and so she's like, yeah, I just, I really want to focus on work-life balance and I really want to just like have a good time. And, you know, long story short, the girl didn't get a very good GPA. I'm assuming she didn't get into med school. Maybe she did. I don't know. But like, she was the one that was constantly missing classes and constantly like having problems and like, mm -hmm. didn't get what she like was supposed to get out of this program. And the rest of us were like, no, we have two semesters to prove ourselves. Let's go, you know, no mm -hmm. sleep, working all day, every day. If, you know, if you drop and you pass out, okay, sleep for 30 minutes, go study some more. Like, that's what you got to be in. That's your mindset. There's no work-life balance right now, man. There's, they're just not. When you're a PA, you get work-life balance. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. After you get that job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You get a lot of work-life balance. Even then you're learning. <laughs> even then um, you have to learn that job. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, PA school is really hard. I would say as hard or harder than my post back, but like, you'll get your work-life balance down the line. You know, mm -hmm. you're still young. You don't need it. You don't need sleep. You don't need to rest. Just go. <laughs> That's true. not medical advice. Yeah, it's just the, the hard truth of the medicine. It's yeah, we like sacrifice our bodies and our psychology and whatnot for other people's bodies and psychology. Yep, yep. But like you know, that's what's that's your job. That's what you're signing up for. You know, boarding in progress, and we're back. Okay. <laughs> um, where'd we leave off, Omar? You want to go with question number four? Uh, do, 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 do. I think we kind of went into that a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. How did your master's program help to increase your chances of getting into PA program? Elijah, you did say that it helped you stand up because you talked about nutrition and how mm -hmm. you were very passionate about nutrition, how there is a growing trend, I guess, in this country that food is medicine 
and that mm-hmm. health is wealth and that we all need to be more holistic when it comes to our health care. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I'm, I mean, I'm in public health. And even to this day, I can just speak from personal experience. I understand the value of sexual health, HIV and STI testing. It's really at the bottom of the list for a lot of people. Um, it's now physical health, maybe mental health. Um, and there's a lot of there's just huge gaps in the education system that I feel like a PA does a really good job of sort of filling in because a physician might not have time. So hence, you have the PAs and the NPs that really come in and spend the most amount of time with um, patients on a regular basis. And so for me, that's how that's what really clicked for me. And I was incredibly inspired by that when I had a shadowing experience. So, yeah, you pretty much answered that beautifully. Like, I'm really happy to hear that. That's I'm sure through your interview, you really showed your passion Mm -hmm. for the work. They saw it and said, this is the guy. This is the guy that's, that we want in our class. So I think thank- with my personal statement, with regards to that question, uh, I was able to tie in uh, that that master's, the, the degree I got in medical nutrition to how I wanted to practice as a provider. Uh, the fact that nutrition is like a very holistic aspect of medicine that not many people practice it. So that I think uh, the fact that I was able to tie in my my recent education to what how I would want to practice as a PA whether or not you do it in public health or physiology or whatever masters or post or that you pursue, I think if you can tie that in, whether or not it'd be in your personal statement or your interview and just touch up on that, I, I think that kind of helped me a little bit. I'm not too sure. Cause I, I've yet, I, when I get there on, in August, I still want to talk to like uh, that their ad comes and say like, Hey, like, what did I do differently? Like what, what made me stand out? I, I personally don't know. That's just what I'm assuming uh, made me stand out. But um but yeah, I think that if you could tie like your recent education and your experiences into why you also want to practice as a PA, I think is a big plus. That's at least what I did. Mm-hmm. So you talked about that in your essay and also in your interview? I touched up on it in my interview because I stated it in my personal statement. And they they did ask about my master's. And I said, yes, yeah, like it, it, it was a really big part of my education, actually. Like I went in thinking I was just here to boost the GPA, but actually I, you know, retained a lot of knowledge from it and it's something I want to utilize as a PA in the future. Did you actually say that in your interview? Like I really went there to boost my GPA, but then I actually got educated. Oh yeah. I, I'm brutally honest. <laughs> yeah. I think being honest too, because uh, they, they know when B uh, sorry, forgive me. Yeah. They know BS when they see it. Uh, yeah. If you're just honest with them, like they, they understand how things are. And if you can make light of a situation and, and really like show them like you're able to, you know, tackle these things like with the light heart and, you know, that kind of like positive demeanor, then I, I think it's something that really stands out to them. But yeah, I, I was really honest with them. I had no, I had nothing to hide. <laughs> kind of like how we're having a conversation right now. This is exactly mm-hmm. how I talk to them. Yeah. It sounds really genuine because like they know what you were doing. I mean, maybe you would have got the masters if you didn't want to go to PA school. Maybe you wouldn't have. But like either way, you made the best of it. So it just sounds really genuine. Mm-hmm. I like that. Um, kind of building on that, do you feel like the master's, pers- <laughs> sorry, what does that say? Oh, do you feel like the master's program that you did prepared you for the academic rigors of PA school? So I, I wish you would have asked me that two months from now because I, I haven't <laughs> started yet. Uh, That's true. Most, yeah, most, program, most programs have started already, but I unfortunately have not started yet. I still... Despite the fact that I did so much academically the past couple of years, I still feel that nervousness. And I think anyone who goes into it will feel it because uh, you just don't know what to expect. And you just hear the the stories of like the, the fire hydrant analogy and, mm-hmm. and it, that it's a whole different beast. And I, I really won't know how to answer that until I'm in. But I can tell you now that I'm nervous. Um, I'm hoping it prepares me. I'm hoping that me being able to find balance, that academic work and being a uh, dad, like finding that balance in my life would somehow transition into being a P- PAS, but um, I wouldn't know it yet until I start. Sure. Yeah, it would be a better question if we uh, if we asked you in the fall after you started the program. Reconvene. <laughs> yeah, we should. Like, no, yeah, actually, I'm like, I'm like struggling. I'm, I'm dying out here, guys. <laughs> That's par for the course, man. That's normal. <laughs> Everybody feels like that. 
No, I mean, the fire hydrant analogy is totally true. It's just like it never feels like it's going to end because it doesn't. And like, <laughs> I guess just kind of just limit your expectations. You're not going to feel like you know anything until you graduate because you just like don't really have time to. You know what I mean? So like by the time you learn something and you really got it, you're already studying for like three other things. So you just like you don't really know these things. But then like you graduate and you're like, wait a minute, I know some of this stuff. You know, so just kind of keep your head down, walk through the fire hydrant. You'll get it. I'm sorry, that was my son. <laughs> Is that Caleb? <laughs> yeah, he was asking for more iPad time. I was kind of like. I figured. Yeah. We're almost done, Caleb, I promise. Oh, no, he's okay. He's fine. <laughs> Uh, all right, we did that. All right, Omer, you got another one? Um, I guess we went almost over, over everything, but um, the final would be, how did you finance your, your master's degree? Did you, did you, you worked, you said you a little bit at the time, or did you take out loans? I did work, but um, most of my money for work went towards, and that's another thing, another layer of the onion. I, <laughs> I was financing my wedding on top of all of this. Uh, oh, yeah. I was also getting married. <laughs> um, so all my money from my job was going to the wedding. Um, so I had to take out loans for this one. I think I did graduate plus loans, I believe. Um, because doing a master's does fall under the realm of being eligible for those graduate plus loans. And unfortunately, I still have like a big lump sum from my undergraduate. But I, I was already going forward in this path. I already knew this is what I wanted to do. So I saw it as an investment towards myself. And even though I had to take out more loans, uh, and at the end of the day, it's going to all be worth it. Yeah, there's really no other way. There's no, there's no turning back. <laughs> Not really. I mean, there's military, I guess, if you want to spend a few years, get the GI Bill, you know, like I basically did. But that's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So much time. It might be better to just do it on the back end, you know, go like do a program that does uh, like loan repayment afterwards, that kind of deal. Yes. It's just student I loans are inevitable, that. man. There's, there's just no other way. Yeah, unless you're you have a good like family and they're willing to pay yeah. for it. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, that that's not that sounds nice. <laughs> uh, I don't have that. I don't know about you guys. But my my mom has offered, but I'm like, no, I kind of want I kind of want to be independent in this. Um, so I did take out the loans, but my mom did offer. But uh, yeah, I I took out loans to her undergrad and for this master's. Yeah. I do know if you uh, work for a nonprofit, government, or even university, they do have the option of 120, uh, after 120 repayments of your loans, um, they'll pay off the rest. So mm -hmm. that's like maybe 10 years, or maybe, I don't know if you can condense that at some point, but that's what I've learned. If you get into either a job that's nonprofit, government, or university. Yeah, so, yeah, so loan forgiveness, I think it's like a certain number of months, but it uh accumulates to eventually like 10 years um yeah. another option you can look into is like what boris said doing military i did consider that i got in touch with a couple officers and recruiters uh just wasn't for my family's lifestyle and then there's another one called the national health service corps or something yeah. like that mm -hmm. i did look into that and it requires you to practice primary care um in underserved populations and i, I i'm still considering it i i'm very much gravitating towards being a hospital PA and I know none of that falls within the realm of primary care so if you're willing to do primary care for at least like a couple of years then I think that that would be a good option I know those are like the three main options that I hear people talk about when repaying their loans is that 10-year loan repayment uh, loan forgiveness military and the national health service score yeah uh the health service score keeps changing but I think it's it's basically like a normal PA job just like not paid super well, maybe 90, 100 max. And you're doing primary care, usually in like either really bad neighborhoods or like refugees. Uh, a lot of times people that don't speak English, it's just like, it's uh, it's kind of harder in some ways than working a different job. And then they give you an extra, I think 20 or 25 grand a year towards your loans. Mm -hmm. I want to say tax-free. So, I mean, it's a good benefit. It's like 50 grand and then you can re-op. So it could be a hundred uh, total. So it's a good, pretty good deal. Um, Another option is you can just get into a higher paying specialty like cardiothoracic surgery, dermatology, you know, and after mm -hmm. two years, they'll be making way more than that anyway. So it's oh, just, yeah. it depends what you do, you know, but either way, you're going to be making enough money to make your payments. So I wouldn't worry about it. Usually. Six figures is a good salary. 
It's a big yeah. sell. It's a big increase from at least what I'm learning now. So. Yeah, more money, more problems. Yeah, a threefold or fourfold increase or something like that. Yep. Yeah, you'd be amazed at how quickly your lifestyle changes. And then it's like, wait, what? Now I need more. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. It'd be what it be. Um, Omer, do you have any more PA questions or application questions before I get into the fun stuff? No, I think that's everything. Um, thank you, Elijah. Yeah, man. No worries. Just uh, feel free to uh, hit me up as well. I don't know if you're in that same thread as me and Boris are in. But yeah, yeah man, if you ever have any questions, like if you want to update me on your cycle, just go go ahead and hit me up. And I, I love doing this for people who were in the same boat as me because I, I know I know the struggle. Boris knows the struggle. That's why he's doing this, um, just to make it more transparent for other applicants. But yeah, thanks, Boris. Thanks, Omer, for having me. Absolutely. Hopefully this is helpful. So I'm going to post this as like one big long interview and then I'm going to just break it up into uh, like smaller bits, more topic specific. Um, I'm also, oh, give me one second. <laughs> Aha, I have one in my backpack. I'm also going to plug my book. Not sure if you have this, Elijah, but I'll send you one for free, obviously. Uh, okay, that sounds good. Yep. Step by step, how to write your personal statement, uh, how to fill out the CASP application, that kind of thing. So everybody should get this. It'll be in the information for the video. Uh, what else? Elijah, what's your favorite color? Blue. Blue. Those are the colors at my wedding. <laughs> Wait, what about your wedding? It, it, those are the colors at my wedding. Blue. Oh, yeah? Where'd you guys get <laughs> yeah. married? Uh, here in Arizona, um, in the desert. It was really nice. <laughs> in the desert? Yeah. My, uh, my, my picture on my email on, on our thread is that's actually for my wedding. Oh, <laughs> I yeah? use that for everything. Yep. That's my ID for school now for Rutgers and I've uploaded it to like every single... <laughs> Like LinkedIn, all that. It's so small. I can. I'm trying to like zoom in on it. Oh, that's from your wedding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he looks really <laughs> sharp. He's got like a blue blazer, no tie, got a pocket square. Was, I was a little skinnier. I did starve myself to fit that, but yeah, yeah. Getting, getting a little weight, the happy weight. <laughs> You're just uh, yeah, the happy. Weight. You're getting a head start for PA school because you get the freshman 15 all over again. <laughs> it's just True. that's what it is. It's okay. There's always a fitness center, but you don't have time to use it. Um, Omer, what's your favorite color? Green, because I love just immersing myself in nature. Um, oh. being in LA, there's a lot of hiking. I go to the beach and, you know, I love also national parks like Yosemite and Sequoia. Those are my two favorite uh, places to go. Yeah, Sequoia is my dream. I think I'm going to be in LA in August visiting a buddy. I definitely want to go to Sequoia really bad. Sequoia is beautiful. Those trees are huge, man. <laughs> They look like buildings. Like I can't wait to they, see. They they books. they're really tall. They're really wide too. It's crazy. Yeah, like they have like a cut out one. We got like twenty people standing in it. It's crazy. Oh yeah. Oh, I can't Beautiful. wait. Yeah, Omar, I'll definitely hit you up if I'm in LA. Um. <laughs> all right. Last but not least, Elijah, what is your favorite animal? Uh, sea turtle. But that's because uh, there's there's a little background on my uh, ancestry. I don't know if it's true or not. Um, my one of my ancestors, I think, like great 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 grandpa was um. He was, he was fishing out in the ocean in the Philippines, and uh -huh. there was a storm. Next, you know, he wakes up on a beach. There's a giant sea turtle next to him. So the story is that the sea turtle saved him. So without that sea turtle, I wouldn't be here uh, with you guys today. So thank goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, cool. That's like Johnny Depp's character. What do you say? <laughs> They're like, how did you get off the island? He's like, I strung together a bunch of sea turtles with hair from my back. <laughs> kind of the same. I don't, know how true, I don't know how true it is. It's just what I heard from my, from my grandma. So. <laughs> Wait, your grandpa is Captain Jack Sparrow? <laughs> it's so cool. You're famous. <laughs> um, Omer, what's your favorite animal? You can't say sea turtle. That one's taken. Yeah, sorry, Omer. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So I have two, but I guess I'll go with the um, the the sperm whale, just because they can live for so long. They can also live, I think, almost close to 100 years. Mm -hmm. And just to be able to live life for that long, to see like how much experience, how much knowledge an animal on this planet has, that's incredible. I mean, I think now with modern medicine, the three of us are going to live pretty close to 100 if things go pretty well. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just the, the ocean. I love the ocean and being able, like if I was reincarnated, I wouldn't mind being reincarnated as as a whale. As so, a sperm whale? As a sperm Well, and, and yeah, yeah sperm whale, sure. <laughs> Yeah, if you have to be something, you may as well be something that's really hard to kill, like a whale. 
Um, I think sperm whales are the only animal that hunt killer whales, like orcas. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I went down like a YouTube rabbit hole about this is like what I do late at night if I can't sleep, <laughs> I just like watch animal videos. So that's a stupid question. But I'm pretty sure sperm whales are the only animals that actually hunt uh, orcas because supposedly orcas are like top of the food chain. But if sperm whales mm -hmm. get it into their head, they actually hunt them and try to eat them. I didn't even know that. And then there's one, I forget what it's called. It had like a really bad, I'm not going to swear it, a bad A name. Um, it was like the largest teeth of any animal ever to live. And it was this massive sperm whale, this like super huge carnivorous sperm whale. Um, ancient sperm whale. I kind of, I kind of want to look it up too. I know. I'm trying to remember what it was called. It was super cool. It was, a, oh yeah. The Leviathan. Oh, I know that. I know. I, I've heard of that one. <laughs> you heard of that? Yeah. I, I went down that rabbit hole as well. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Maybe I that's why it was in my recommended. <laughs> Because Elijah was like, uh, me things. no, okay. So there's like, if you look up Leviathan, it's like this BS like storybook character, but it's like Leviathan whale. It's real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I went down that rabbit hole. Oh my goodness. That's so cool. Yeah. There it is like taking out megalodons and stuff. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. If it's, if it's true, obviously the YouTube rabbit hole, it had the largest teeth of any animal ever to live. They were like, you know, just massive, like one foot long things. Oh, it's so cool. All right, good answer. Uh, oh my <laughs> sperm whales, a solid answer. I inspired you guys. Good, <laughs> you did. I, uh, I agree with you on the green. I've always just liked green, I don't know why. Um, and then my, my favorite animal used to be the Siberian tiger because I just thought they were cool, mm -hmm. but I mean, now the obvious answer is dogs. <laughs> Could you not like a dog? I, I saw your video the other day. Other day, your neighbor, your favorite neighbor is your oh, Holly. Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, she should be in this video, but it's gonna take a while <laughs> to get her out of the house. Yeah, that, that was funny. I like that. <laughs> Literally. All right. Any parting words there, Elijah? Words of wisdom. Um, if you're really in the trenches of it, just keep pushing. Uh, mm -hmm. every day, one day at a time. Make sure you can go to sleep saying, I did everything I could do today to make myself more successful for the future. Um, there's going to be more days where you guys feel like it, it's it's tough and it, it's it's really hard to get through. And it, like you just feel that doubt and that negativity. But if, if you just keep pushing every day, because you're going to hit that point when a school tells you that you've gotten accepted or even when you get an interview and you're just going to be so ecstatic. And that's just going to kind of cascade into your stories of success. So just keep pushing now. It sucks now. It sucks your situation now, but keep pushing because for the future, every, everything's worth it. You know, Boris is, you know, we're, this is kind of an evolution. We have Boris here who did it, me who just recently did it, and Omar who's going to, like Boris says, is going to uh, eventually do it as well. Yep. Next year, two years from now, Elijah, or not Elijah, Omar is going to be the one in Elijah's seat. Um, Elijah is going to be in my seat, taking over BTPA, my whole organization, and I'm going to be retired. <laughs> Boris is going to be Yoda. <laughs> Yoda? Yoda from Star Wars. I mean, I'm bald yeah, enough. I'm not years. short enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to say something in like a Yoda voice, and that it, it's like something <laughs> you are, but whatever. I lost it. I, I, tried. <laughs> I don't want to be Yoda. I want to be like Obi Wan. Okay, Obi that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Old Ben. <laughs> Old Ben is that what he called? Oh, well, when when he's a uh, like a hermit, <laughs> when um, he becomes like a hermit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Star Wars that much anymore. I was a Harry Potter guy. I was never a big Star Wars guy. <laughs> you you can uh, end the video with a uh, do or do not. There is no try. Oh, was that a Yoda thing? That's a Yoda thing. Do or do not. There is no try. Oh, oh yes. we're going with cheesy quotes. All right, sweet. I, I yeah. totally got one too. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's such a contentious thing. Like, should you use quotes in your essay or whatever? I use two, I think. I don't know. It depends mm -hmm. who you ask. But like, if there's a quote that's really deep in your heart, you should totally use it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, do or do not. There is no try. I like that. I like that mm -hmm. a lot from our cartoon character. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who said, um, if not me, who, if not now, when. So I'm just going to kind of say my two cents. If like you have it in your mind for whatever reason that you want to be a PA, you're like super into the idea. It's just like it's just pulling at your heartstrings for whatever reason. You can't think about like doing anything else. There's a reason you're feeling that, you know. You believe in God, you don't believe in God. There's a reason the universe, God, whoever, is like putting that in your mind as powerfully as they are. 
So, you know, listen to that, pursue that, do everything you can. If it ends up not going that way, you know, be open to other possibilities, being a nurse, you know, doing accelerated nursing and then maybe being an NP or something like that's fine. But like, listen to that. There's a reason you're feeling the way you are. And then there is an answer. You can take my route. You can take Elijah's route. You know, there's a way to get there. So there's a reason you're feeling this way and you should totally listen to it. Don't give up. It's worth it. I promise. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you both. Thanks, you guys. Clapping or snapping right now. I don't know why you're not. <laughs> I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, y'all. So yeah, Elijah, thank you very much for coming on, uh, sharing your wisdom. Omer, thank you for asking the questions and being here. You know, best of luck to both of you. Let me know if you need anything. And I think after a few months of the program, we should get a, another update from Elijah, how he's doing. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll message you. I'll be on Instagram. Absolutely, man. All righty. All right. Virtual uh, fist bumps. Let's go. Fist bumps. Song oh, three. One, two, three. Fist bumps. <laughs> You're like an Instagram boomerang. <laughs> All righty. Actually, Actually wait, guys. Hang on. This is a up? stupid idea, but let me try that. Let me try that right now. Uh, um, I'm going to get it from mine, too. <laughs> Or, oh, are we going to all do it at the same time? <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally. All right, sweet. Omer's like, I don't do Instagram. No, nope, he does. He does. I'll, I'll do it. Why not? <laughs> Wait, does everyone have the same phone? Uh, 12. Yes. 12 from Max. Well, I got, yeah, I got a little window for mine. <laughs> oh, look you at you. Know. Look at you. Bougie. Well, my wife, it's my wife. She, she made me get it. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fist bumps on three. Ready? One, one, two, three. Oh my god, it's totally um uh, it I'm looks gonna so watch that one. It looks so <laughs> awkward. Whatever, I'll post it. I don't care. And yes, I have flowers in my house, sue me. <laughs> I like flowers. No, that's a good thing. Um yeah, I'll uh, I'll tag both of y'all in my story. All right, guys. Well it's nice so talking awkward. to you. I I gotta go nice. get Halo for lunch, but <laughs> absolutely, man. Oh, I think I have to go get a massage. Tough life. I <laughs> like. Oh yeah, yeah, I have to get back to work. Yeah, you oh, do. That, that's, oh, so that's what PAs do on their days off. That's nice. Well, did I get massages? Yeah, we're so stressed out. We need our, you know, our traps reset. So stressed. When I have the money. I'll, I'll live like Boris when I have the money. <laughs> um, I don't know. When you have the money, you live a little better than me because all my money's going into this house and then it's getting rented. Then I'll be homeless. It's um, okay. All mine's just gonna go to my son's college tuition, so it's not yeah, mine. Literally, anymore. your kiddo's <laughs> eating all your money. <laughs> As he should be. All right, y'all. Have a good one. Thank you for coming on. I'll let you know when this is posted, okay? Bye. Right. Thank you guys so much. Later. Guys. Take care. Bye.